We describe the PKPD properties of antibiotics used for pneumonia and distinguish between various types of pneumonia and use the risk stratification tools to assess a patient's risk with pneumonia and aid in determining setting of treatment. Now let's list the likely causative pathogens for each type of pneumonia, including susceptibility profiles and patient risk factors for multi-drug resistant pathogens. Now at this point, you should know that uh, VAP is a more severe type of pneumonia uh, and is associated for, with more resistant pathogens. And CAP or community acquired pneumonia is a less severe pneumonia and less resistant pathogens cause it. Now let's take a look at the common causes of community acquired pneumonia. Viruses by far are the most common causes of CAP. However, when it comes to bacterial causes of community acquired pneumonia, Streptococcus pneumoniae is by far the number one respiratory pathogen causing pneumonia. Now, although Staphylococcus aureus can also cause CAP, not every patient needs MRSA coverage, and we'll talk about that more shortly. Now, there are a couple of gram-negative organisms that are likely to cause CAP, so Haemophilus influenzae and Moraxella cateralis of note. These two pathogens in the United States are likely to produce beta-lactamases. So that's important to keep in mind when we select treatment. And lastly, there are atypical organisms that can cause community-acquired pneumonia, such as Legionella, Chlamydia pneumoniae, and Mycoplasma pneumoniae. Now, when it comes to nosocomial pneumonia, you're more likely to have multi-drug resistant organisms causing uh, HAP and VAP. Of course, Staphylococcus aureus is one of the number one organisms causing nosocomial pneumonia, and in this case, often the strains are MRSA. And of course, just like CAP, Streptococcus pneumonia is the number one uh, respiratory organism that can also cause pneumonia in the nosocomial setting. And when it comes to gram-negative, we have some of these multidrug-resistant gram-negative rods. So Pseudomonas aeruginosa, as well as Klebsiella pneumoniae and Acinetobacter species, which often tend to be resistant to multiple drugs. Now let's take a look at the CDC EPIC study that was published in 2050, and it was a population-based surveillance study for community-acquired pneumonia requiring hospitalization among patients um, adults uh, 18 years of age or older in five hospitals in Chicago and Nashville. Now this study looked at uh, 2,320 patients and what they were trying to do is to identify common causes of community acquired pneumonia requiring hospitalization. Now as you can see in general no cause is found in more than half of the patients who are hospitalized for CAP in the United States. The second thing that you will find here is that viruses are actually more common than bacteria. So you can see here human rhinoviruses, influenza, uh, coronaviruses. And while uh, Legionella and Enterobacterialis uh, are found among hospitalized patients, really they are rarely found in outpatient community-acquired pneumonia. And what I mean by that is community-acquired pneumonia that's not severe, that can be treated outpatient. And we'll talk more about that shortly. The CDC has designated a serious threat level to drug-resistant streptococcus pneumoniae. The mechanism of resistance of streptococcus pneumoniae to beta-lactams involves alterations in the penicillin binding proteins or transpeptidase, which are the binding sites for beta-lactams. Now, note that it does not involve production of beta-lactamases. So beta-lactamase inhibitors are not going to overcome this resistance. So in particular, penicillins bind penicillin binding protein 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, and 2X, as well as 3. Strep pneumo can also acquire RMB gene, which alters the binding site for macrolides, as well as it can acquire the MEF-A gene, which encodes an efflux pump for macrolides. Now, let's take a look at the rate of resistance in streptococcus pneumonia. The overall rate of macrolide resistance is almost 40%, and the rate is actually higher in the ambulatory care compared to the inpatient setting. The rate is also significantly higher in respiratory isolates, compared to blood isolates. And in some regions, the rates were less than 
were less than 25%, but even in those regions, the rate in respiratory isolates specifically were still higher than 25%. In California, the rate is higher in Southern California compared to Northern California. Tetracycline resistant is also high, 12 to 19% of the isolates. Penicillin resistant is also high at 35%, and amoxicillin resistant is 4 to 5%. Ceftriaxone resistant is relatively low, and levofloxacin resistant is very low. Now, the other organisms, Haemophilus influenzae, as well as Moraxella catarralis, they produce beta lactamases. In fact, more than 90% of Moraxella make beta lactamases, and up to 30% of H. flu produce beta lactamases. Now here is information from two different guidelines. The first guideline is the HAP and VAP guideline. So here they have identified risk factors for MRSA in HAP and VAP, as well as risk factors for multi-drug resistant pseudomonas in HAP and VAP. So the common risk factor for these two is that if someone, if a patient has received IV antibiotics in the previous 90 days, that is a risk factor for selection for MRSA as well as selection for multidrug resistant pseudomonas. If someone has these risk factors, they should be covered uh, for MRSA and for multidrug resistant pseudomonas. Now, for multidrug resistant pseudomonas, also two other risk factors include mechanical ventilation as well as history of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Now, when we look at the guidelines for CAP, you can see that for MRSA or pseudomonas, they actually recommend to use a locally validated risk factor for either pathogen. So it really depends on the hospital because they couldn't find a validated risk factor that will work across the country. And one strong risk factor for MRSA or pseudomonas is actually a prior history of isolation of these organisms, especially if it's in the respiratory tract. So if somebody had a sputum culture in the past that actually grows pseudomonas or MRSA, then the next time that patient has CAP, they're more likely to have pseudomonas or MRSA, even if it's not a sputum culture. So let's say if someone had a urine culture or a blood culture, that had MRSA or pseudomonas, when they get CAP, they're more likely to have MRSA or pseudomonas. And of course, because streptococcus pneumonia is the number one cause of community acquired pneumonia, there are also risk factors for drug resistant strep pneumo. So comorbidities, specifically chronic heart disease, uh, such as heart failure, uh, chronic lung disease like COPD, chronic liver disease like cirrhosis, and chronic uh, renal disease like CKD, these are likely to uh, select for drug resistant strep pneumo. So you can see that these patients, including patients with diabetes, alcoholism, malignancy, and aspirinia, they're more likely to be exposed to uh, healthcare settings. So they're more likely to be resistant to have uh, at risk of having drug resistant strep pneumo. Here I have listed the common antibiotics used for treatment of pneumonia. Now with streptococcus pneumonia, I have broken it into two columns. So one is a viral type strep pneumo. And what I mean by that is that this is streptococcus pneumonia, pneumonia that you are likely to find in a healthy individual without risk factors for drug resistant strep pneumo. And then there's a column for drug resistant strep pneumo. And this is the isolate that you are more likely to isolate in someone with those comorbidities. For Staphylococcus aureus, of course, we need to distinguish between MSSA and MRSA. So it's important to know which one we need to cover because you can see many beta lactams cover MSSA, but not MRSA. And then for gram negatives, H flu and Moraxella catarralis are two common ones. So it's important to see which ones uh, cover these. And then uh, we have uh, pseudomonas as well as atypical cover. So you can see which um, antibodies cover atypicals, in particular fluoroquinolones as well as tetracyclines and uh, macrolides have excellent activity against atypical bacteria.